hope you're doing well. Thanks so much for joining me for today's video. And if you're new around here, my name is Grace and I love plants. Today, I'm going to be answering some of your questions while I'm repotting my Monsteras. My Monsteras are in dire need of repotting. They haven't given me a new leaf in months and months. And yeah, I think it's high time I release them and given them a little bit more room to grow. And even though it is winter here in Australia, and I know we're not supposed to repot them in winter, my apartment does stay relatively warm and they still get really nice light. So hopefully they won't react too badly to being repotted in winter. I've also asked you guys some questions on my Instagram and on YouTube, and I've compiled a list of really good questions that I can't wait to get into. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Just quickly before we begin, I post videos every week, so make sure you're subscribed and ring the notification bell if you haven't already so you don't miss out on my future uploads. And yeah, let's get into it. So I've got my potting tarp here and I'm going to start out with my Monstera Deliciosa that is just growing crazy wild. I have left this for way too long. Look at that. I tried to unpot my Monstera Deliciosa without much success. It is really attached to the pot and I accidentally broke off a leaf. Oopsie! I'm gonna try with a different plant and then we will come back to that one. I'm thinking maybe we'll do the Monstera Thai Constellation. Okay, hopefully this will be easier than the Monstera Deliciosa. So I really struggled with that one. Okay, there we go. Much better. So I actually repotted this six months ago. It's already looking to be a little bit root bound. So I'm gonna try and upsize it to this pot right here. All right, so first question is from Ashley Daniels. And she asks, what potting mix do you use when you repot? Do you mix up your own? So yes, I do mix up my own. And I've also got a video on my potting mix, which I will link up in the cards above if you're interested in that. I break down in there all the different elements that I use and why I build my own potting mix. Hopefully that sort of information will be helpful to you. It's a really short one, so if you're interested in that, you can have a quick look. Ashley also asks tips for keeping skin dapsis picked as lovely and what fertilizer I use. Okay, so... For Skindapsis Pictus, I actually struggled with a couple of mine when I first got them. They're not the easiest to grow in my opinion, especially if you're starting from a small plant. To get it lush and bushy, you really need to propagate them. And I find that their growth pattern gets a little bit leggy over time. So I hear you actually, I'm not exactly a pro when it comes to Skindapsis. I think it's a little bit hit and miss depending on the specific variety. For me personally, I feel like the Skindapsis Pictus Silver Lady is the one that I've had most success with. I feel like it has to do with the humidity levels, not so much the lighting because I've experimented with putting my Skindapsis closer to the window and it gets really nice bright light but it's still got leggy. So I don't think that lighting is that much of an issue. I think it's actually more around humidity if you want it to keep the plant a little bit more compact and lush. So maybe you can try that, increase the humidity and see how you go. Hopefully it you know, gives you a little bit more success, but definitely let me know how you go with that. Um, otherwise we can continue to troubleshoot that. And in terms of fertilizer, I alternate between Wormwe, as I mentioned before in my one of my previous videos, I can't remember what it is, but I'll link it up above in the cards and also put it in the description box below. But alternatively, I do use GT Foliage Focus as well, which I will grab for you in one second. So this is what I'm talking about, the Growth Technology Foliage Focus. A couple of other people do use it as well, and I've heard really good success with it. So if you can get this where you are, I would highly recommend. So hopefully that answers your question. Thank you so much for submitting one. All right, so guys, it has a really nice healthy root system, as you can see here. So I'm gonna repot it into the larger pot and get to question number two. Okay, so next question is from Emma Sunbeam on YouTube, and she asks, 
what's one genus of plant you think is overrated and would happily bin? This might be a little bit controversial because I know a lot of people enjoy this genus of plants, but it is just not for me. And if you watched my overrated plants video, you might be able to guess. And that is the alocasia. I have tried my hand at a couple varieties of alocasia. I think I had the alocasia stingray. I also had and alocasia amazonica and I no longer have them. I think the thing for me is that they only ever give me a handful of leaves at any given point in time. So if a new leaf comes up, one dies out, then winter rolls around and then it goes dormant. Yeah, so I really struggle with this genus of plants and you asked the question, which one would I happily bin? And based on actual experience, I actually binned all of my alocasias and I've avoided them ever since, so that is my answer. That's a really good question and I am curious to hear your point of view as well. Do you have any genus of plants that you just don't enjoy and would happily bin? Let me know in the comments below. Okay guys, so I've done the Monstera Thai Constellation. This is much larger than the pot it was in before, so hopefully it will start to give me new leaves. Let's move on to my second Monstera that I'll be repotting. Just this guy right here, the Albo Boisigiana. All right, so next question is from Hello Zero on YouTube. And the question is, why are variegated plants so highly rated? Not a lot of people get the hype around variegated plants because they grow slower and it actually looks sickly to some people, which is true, I mean, it's a mutation. That's one of the things that makes it a little bit more interesting and unique and yeah, more pleasant to look at because it's not just green. Say for example, take the Albo Monstera, it just looks so much more beautiful with variegation as compared to the regular green variety. All right, so I'm gonna go through two questions really quickly, and these are from Instagram. And All My Haven asks, do you plan to sell some plant babies? And Ash K. Danny asks, will you ever consider propagating your variegated Monstera one day? Those are very good questions, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that as I am unpotting this one right here. Okay, so to answer your question, All My Haven, about whether or not I plan to sell some plant babies, I actually do. Um, every once in a while, I will post some cuttings on my Instagram stories. So if there are any particular plants that you'd be interested in, um, make sure to look out for them on my stories. I do plan to sell some Hoya cuttings and also some of my philodendrons. So yeah, I will share more information about a plant sale later down the track. Most of this will probably be on my Instagram though, so just keep an eye out for that information on that platform. And in terms of propagating my Monstera elbow, I plan to propagate them in springtime when they will bounce back quicker and grow much faster. But I'm really liking the way it looks now, so I'm just thinking about whether or not I really wanna chop it up or let it continue to grow a little bit more before I do that. But I may need the money because my fiance and I are planning to get a house and we're also planning our wedding. And there are a lot of expenses that we need to cover. So a plant sale and propagating my plants will probably happen, to be honest with you. So as you can see here, I could probably propagate it at about here, here, and all along the internodes. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I'm still not too sure. What do you guys think? Quick intermission, guys. A reminder to like this video if you liked it. It really helps out my channel. And while you're at it, leave me a comment down below if you have any further questions for me. I'm going to be compiling more of these questions for a future q and I'm just gonna pot them up. All right, so there we are, guys. My Monstera elbow is all repotted up. I've just reused the pot that my Tycon was in and it fits perfectly. So that's that one done. I'm going to go back to my Monstera Deliciosa and wrangle the roots out of that one. So one second. Back to this big boy. I am actually going to chop off this root. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please don't hate me. This is really long and it's getting in the way, so it's gotta go. 
that makes it much more manageable now. I've got about six more questions to go. All of them are also from Instagram. First one is from Me Loves Mints. Am I saying that right? Mel Love Mints? Me Love Mints. Um, but the question is, are you coming up with more plant riddles for us to guess? <laughs> I love this question. So for those of you who follow me on my Instagram, you know that this is something that I started doing a while ago and you guys seem to really enjoy it on my Instagram. If you guys missed the riddles, I do have a highlight pinned on my Instagram profile as well and all the riddles are on there. So. Uh, yeah, feel free to have a play if you like and you can submit your questions or your answers to me via DM and I'll let you know if you got it right or not. Thanks so much for your question. I'll be planning something for that so keep an eye out. It's come loose. Oh my god. Okay, so next question is from Urban Leafery and he or she asks, what do I do for work? Short answer to that question, I am a lawyer turned management consultant and I'm currently working for a tech company. I have had quite an unconventional career path. So I don't know if that will be helpful to some of you or if you're just curious to know what exactly that looked like. Um, more than happy to share. I could actually go on and on about like my career history and like what I do at the moment and all of that kind of stuff but I'm not sure if you guys would be really interested in that um, but if you are you can let me know in the comments below I can maybe do a dedicated video on that. I hope that answers your question Urban Leafery and yeah thank you so much for that let's move on to the next one. So Penelope Tran asks, please give us updates on your jewel orchids and their terrariums. Yes, it's been a while since I updated you guys on my jewel orchids and terrariums. Um, I will maybe film an update for you guys. At the moment, they are doing okay, um, especially the one in the new sort of like mini greenhouse uh, terrarium. I haven't really been posting much on that because the moss that I put in that is not doing well at all. Um, I didn't know too much about like live moss and how to take care of them. And I've been giving them non-filtered water. Apparently they don't like that and basically they're all dead. It's no longer a green terrarium. It's pretty much brown. Um, but apart from that, like the secondary plants in there, my Fetonia, the ferns, and my jewel orchids are all alive and well. They're growing fine. It's just the moss that isn't doing too, too good. So I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do with that, whether or not I want to replace the moss or just put sphagnum moss on. Um, I haven't had any issues at all with sphagnum moss and it seemed to be working really well for my other jewel orchids. So yeah, I'll update you guys on that very soon. I'm taking forever with this one. Gosh. All right, so that's what the roots are looking like. I have managed to free them and I'm gonna be potting that into here. Joss J underscore plants on Instagram asks, are all your plants kept indoors? Yes, most of my plants are kept indoors. I do have some succulents and like semi-succulents that I leave on my balcony. So like my string of pearls, my cotyledons, my Haworthias and all that kind of stuff, sedums, petrophytums, all of that are out on my balcony because they can tolerate the light and also the wind. But all my other plants are brought indoors now. So to give you a bit of context, I did used to grow some of my plants outdoors in my previous apartment. I had a really nice balcony with west facing light that is also sheltered from crazy winds. So I was able to grow some of my plants out there and to be honest, I think they actually do prefer to be like slightly outdoors. However, in my current environment, it's just not feasible because it gets very windy on my balcony. So I hope that answers your question and I hope that that was helpful. If you are thinking of growing some of your plants on your balcony, rest assured that it's absolutely fine. Um, you just have to make sure that it doesn't get scorched in the light or if it's 
windy where you are, then you kind of just have to protect it from the winds. My Monstera Deliciosa is pretty much all repotted. It is well and good, all ready to go. Last question is from kitty underscore k8 on Instagram, and she asks, do you use a grow light? What one would you recommend? All right, so I'll just give you a bit of backstory. A year and a half ago or something, I bought one of those like LED lights on eBay, the clip-on ones with like two prong on the heads. Um, I used that for a little while and it did do the trick, but honestly, I don't think that there was much growth from that grow light. It was mm, sustainable, but I don't think it would give you like fast growth. So the one that I would recommend is actually the Mars Hydro grow lights. I know a couple of other people who have used their grow lights as well and they come in various like dimensions as well. So yeah, maybe you can check that out if that's something that you're interested in. I personally have used the Mars Hydro Grow Light in the Grow Tent. So if you didn't already know, I have a Grow Tent sent from Mars Hydro. Um, and I have a whole video on like an unboxing and setup here on my channel, which I will link in the cards above and in the description box below if you haven't seen it already. So if you want more information on that, I would highly recommend you check out that video. Depending on like the space and your setup, you might want to consider like the different configurations. The one that I have is literally like a large panel that I have attached to the top of my grow tent. And you will see that in the video um, that I mentioned before. So yeah, that's the grow light that I use and my plants are loving it in there. So that's the one that I would recommend. All right guys, so that's the end of my repotting and Q&A. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted questions. I really enjoyed answering them and I hope I answered them well and you got what you were looking for. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked this video, you might enjoy my other videos like these ones here, so click to check them out. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, stay mellow my fellows.